I'm John Franks. Uh, I'm the founder and owner of Cord Electronics. I started Cord in 1989 and I went uh, full time around uh, January 1992. But working on the sales side, I also uh, uh, designed some of the products, uh, notably the amplifier ranges, um, and I also do all the styling of all the products as well. So. Yeah, originally I was an avionics engineer. Um, avionics is electronics for aircraft and um, the, I think the most important thing about avionics is that you've got to be very, very precise. You've got to always have the perfect design solution if you're designing for aircraft. You can't have like a band-aid fix for a problem. If there's an pro engineering problem, you've got to apply either plenty of money or pe plenty of design expertise to really problem very perfectly. And, and so I think that, that the, the, the most important thing is that I, I believe that I bought that philosophy from my avionics days over to electronics. I think that um, it stood the company in good stead because uh, even if I knew something was, was expensive or difficult or hard to do, I would, I would go back to my design roots and say, well, yes, it's, it's bound to be worth it. And of course, that's what, uh, when I met Rob and he had a totally different design approach to DAC technology. Um, I think that I was, I was very lucky um, to have the experience to say that even though it was a very expensive solution, a way of designing DACs, it was the best. So therefore, you go with the best, not the cheapest. At that time, I was married to a Canadian lady and uh, her father had an old car that was, was very expensive, very luxurious, and it was called a Cord. She recommended the name, and I, I thought, yeah, Cord's a good name because it's got musical um, uh, connotations. And also, I, I think the interesting thing about um, the name Cord is that it's got a C at one end and a D at the other. And the style of the badge that I wanted to create had these curves. So it, it, it kind of fitted, the word fitted into the badge very nicely. So that's why I chose it. I think, once again, really, it's that philosophy of no matter how hard something is to do, um, no matter how difficult the design process, you do it. You don't take an easy option. You end up with a better product, beautifully engineered, and really the best in the world. I think that's what I've always strived for, to, to actually have products that really are the best. And not just competing, but demonstrate, you know, you can demonstrate that they are actually technically better than the competitors. I think I was first really introduced to the portable audio market, I, I think around about seven years ago, where I was taken by my uh, Japanese distributor. She said, come along and, and see what you think of the, the, the portable audio show. He sa uh, she said, oh, it's crazy, it's really crazy. Um, I mean, obviously, we just went along to, to, to have a look. And I was really fascinated because at that time there were bunches of guys sat around little tables and they all had little um, cigarette tins or little tins and they built their electronics on something called VeraBoard, which is like a, an experimental, uh, an experimenter's uh, board uh, to make electronics. And it, it was really quite fascinating, but the guys were so enthusiastic about what they were doing. And there were some, some bigger companies like Sony and, 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 and other, other players there. But I, I, what, I, what I realized was that it took me back to the early days of audio in the 1970s and the, the, the shows that, that were, were around at that time for, for big audio. But it was 
there was so, so much enthusiasm and so many young people at that time. And I'd seen that had changed during um, the uh, intervening years. And the guys in the, in the main audio systems were getting older and older and sort of less enthusiastic. When I saw this uh, head fight show, it was once again young guys, very enthusiastic. And they were walking around with great big stacks of equipment you know, all, all bound together with straps and things. And I, I, I thought, wow, this is crazy. But I really liked it. And I thought, yeah, we've got technologies that maybe that we could apply to that. And uh, I uh, approached uh, Rob Watts and I said, do you think we could make a, a mobile DAC? Bearing in mind that the first DAC that we worked on um, had four chips of this size and so we would have needed a if, if we were using that technology of 20 years ago or 23, 4 years ago now um, we would have needed a battery the size of a backpack um, so I, I, I think that in the intervening years the, the, electro the, the, the FPGAs had reduced in their power demands and they become um, much more capable and, and much more complex and I think it was the combination of technological progress and also Rob's enthusiasm for actually making a mobile product. And the, the, the first product we, we made was the, the Hugo. And everyone said, what a crazy name. But I, I thought, well, yeah, but I like quirky names. And um, I, I said, well, you take your DAC wherever you, you go. Stupid, I know, but you know, it's, 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 it worked for us. And I, I think it became a very popular product. And I, I think, it really set Cord's path on a different trajectory. I think the, the, the most important thing was we saw the market, we developed a product for that market, and it was instantly loved by the guys. And uh, mind you, they, they, they had plenty of complaints that it was a little too big and it was this and it was that. So, so we worked on that and we, and we, we continued to develop other products uh, for that market. But. Um, yeah, we're very happy to be involved in two areas of business now. So we have the mobile sector and the full size. And it's, they are different businesses and they have different shows and everything like that. But um, they, they both have uh, great qualities and uh, we, we enjoy both of them very much. I think there's been a demographic change in the way people are living now. I mean, people can take good, really good quality audio wherever they go. When I, when I was young, if your life was sort of um, uh, set out by your parents, you would actually meet a girl at 18, you would probably marry at 25, and then you would have your children, and your, you would try to buy a, an apartment or a house, and then you would have your own space, and you would buy a TV, a car, and a hi-fi system. And I think that isn't the case now. I mean, essentially, people don't get married at the age that Rob and I got married initially and, and I think that really there is a, a kind of extended adolescence where guys don't have to get married so early. They still have girlfriends and, and, and they have you know a good time and, and whatever but I, I think that they, they tend to um, stick with their parents, they live with mum and dad still, so they don't have the huge rooms that they can put their own systems in but what they can have is a system on a desk and I think that if, if we continue to make really fine systems uh, that go on a desk that when eventually they do leave mum and dad they, they might consider buying a big system but it's probably much later in life so there's this you know extended time up to their 40s maybe when they're still with mum and dad and then they finally move out and get their own places when they're very rich and they can afford really big systems so we're making small Bijou compact systems, very high quality and very big, really amazing systems. But there's no sort of, there isn't that much in between anymore. So, so, so there have been demographic changes and, and differences. I think not for us. I think what we've found is that as the brand awareness of cord is coming up we're actually selling more big systems but that's probably just us i don't really know about everyone else but i mean we all we like to always push technologies and i think we'll continue to to do that and always make it's always nice to to make the best that you possibly can even if it is expensive and you know you're only going to sell 50 it doesn't matter you know the pride is actually 
you know, designing something that you think, wow, you know, we designed that. You know, and I, I think there is, there is a lot to be said for that. I think working with Rob, working right alongside Rob and listening to what he's listening to, I think I've learned a lot. I think getting to the truth of a performance, going back years when I was initially designing my amplifiers, I was listening to a, a piece by Jacqueline Dupre uh, and I suddenly realised that, that tears were streaming down my face listening to this music and I thought, wow, I really connected there. And I realised that it was because the electronics that I produced allowing all of that and harmonic and harmonic information through the amplifier that actually connected the raw emotion of the piece. I believe that it is about truth. It is getting to musical truth. I think we were very lucky in the early, early days because we were approached by the BBC, the British Broadcasting, and they, they wanted a product um, to, to help them with some, uh, some studios that they had. Uh, they wanted an amplifier that actually improved um, the, the, the sound of certain speakers in these studios, and we were able to, uh, to, to satisfy them. And, and that showed me that what we were doing was on the right track because if we could satisfy hard-nosed um, recording engineers and record producers that really knew mu music and they, know, they, they, they knew the artist, they knew what the artist sounded like and therefore if we could reproduce that in their listening room then we, we were on the right track. I think that was fundamental. I think you know once again having that, that bravery to spend whatever is necessary to to make the design as, as technically as good as it possibly can be. The wonderful thing about Thai audio files is that they seem to have a, a love of music. I think you're all very emotional people. You're not, you're not, you're not a, a race of cold, passionate people. And I, I think that it, it's that passion that you have for life, uh, for your culture and for your music. And I think that because of that you can connect with products that are passionately made as well.